Hello everyone, John here again with the Pank Prusa. I uh, just want to give you an update. I did get my package from Ulta Machine. I ordered five pounds of orange PLA because I do I love the texture that this stuff gives off. It took me a little while, but I started printing again using the orange stuff. The main reason that it took so long is because in between getting the filament, I switched over to Pronter Face and S-Fact. It's a new host and skinning software. It's supposed to be a little bit easier. I had a little bit of uh, rough going at it at first because uh, my axes were just a little bit off and my extruder was quite a bit off compared to the old stuff. Uh, I forgot to mention also I upgraded my Gen 6 board to Marlin. Marlin software or firmware uh, optimized for Gen 6. So got that working, had to recalibrate some things and then I had a couple printing issues. Let me go over to the big box here. Let's see if you guys can see this. I got a bunch of stuff in here. Just a bunch of parts I printed up. It is organized chaos. Had a bunch of test parts in here. This is the test piece that comes with S-Fact. And I had to get my filament size all correct and extrusion size. Went through all the whole testing of everything like that. Uh, and I woke up this morning and have a revelation that if my filament size or my extrusion size is going to be smaller, then my layer size has to be smaller too by at least 20%. At least that's what I've read out. If somebody else there has out there has better information, please pass it along. Uh, but right now I'm running at 3.6 millimeter, 0.36 millimeter layer height, and 0.46 layer thick uh, extrusion thickness, and that is absolutely true. That's how thin my walls are right now. That's the thinnest they've ever been. Just give you an example. Let's see how well this new camera focuses. Here we go. Okay, that doesn't look super great, but it looks a little bit better than um, what I've been printing out recently with this orange stuff. The orange stuff is super sticky. Uh, just to give you an example, I was printing out at 165 on the silver stuff, and it was kind of popping. This stuff I'm printing at 185, and it's running very smoothly. You guys can see it's printing pretty good. There are a few strings. It's not as clean as my older stuff was, but I think it will be, it prints faster now and it prints more reliably. It's at a faster baud. I'm at 25,000 baud. Before I was printing at 38,000 baud. So there was absolutely no pausing anymore. So for small parts like pulleys, I was, I was pausing almost every other or third step. This time I'm not pausing anymore. And it did that because it had communication errors. You can see right here, I'm running Proctor Face. It's pretty good software. Uh, SpaceX Sheila got it working for me or told me about it. He considers it the dark side because it, it, uh, it's got S-Fact built in. S-Fact is just a newer version of SkinForge and it's more updated where you don't have to think as much basically. It's got a lot less settings. Some of the settings from uh, SkinForge have been carved out and um, it's updated. It tells you exactly what you're looking for. How thick, you know, extrusion thickness, millimeters, extrusion width. Those are the only two things you really have to change in this page. Bottom, my bottom has to be a little bit larger, ha ha ha, because uh, I'm running the wooden bed, and the wooden bed is a little bent in the middle because it's being held down on four corners, so I had to go up a little bit. Uh, let's see, chamber is where I don't have to do anything. Clip, you don't have to worry about that. Dimensions where all the magic happens. What you have to do is measure your filament very uh, accurately over several pieces and then average it out. And then uh, this filament packeting density ratio is where all your tweaking is going to be basically. What you do is you print out a test piece like that curved piece I showed you earlier. You measure it and then you hit are you calibrating? Yes. You check that and then you enter what that new what that actual filament size was. The extrusion width was. Then you do the same piece. You scan it again and you keep doing that and it keeps changing the filament packing density radio ratio until you get it right where you want it and then you uncheck it and that that equals these type of parts right here. This doesn't look super great like I said before but uh, the holes are cleaner. Let me see if I can pull out the other ones. There we go. Just for comparison. And plus, I think this might be because it's just a small piece that it gets so hot quickly. You can see that the holes on the right are much 
uh, looser. They're not connected to the, the fill as well. The ones on the left are a little bit better. This is absolutely perfect, uh, well, not perfect, but uh, usable for your belt clamps. On the back side looks great too. So there it is, that's the update for this week. Uh, get some focus there. Uh, if the, you don't like the video, please let me know. I'm running this from my new cell phone, it's the Droid Bionic. If you don't like this type of video quality, just let me know and I'll uh, go back to the webcam, which is right here doing stop motion right now. It's doing time lapse. So that's it for this week. Thanks. Bye.